in any city, in any country. Go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask to visit someone who calls himself the holder of the path. The worker that will try his best to keep a look of indifference on his face while handing you a key which, as he will explain, belongs to an unused supply closet in the building. If only it were that simple. Upon locating and unlocking the correct door, you will find yourself staring out into a narrow, winding road suspended in endless void, the sight only occasionally obstructed by the massive outlines of things best left undescribed. To fall off the path is to be thrown out of reality itself, a nightmarish eternity of inconceivable incon horror awaits anyone who either stumbles into the void by their own error, or is dragged off by the path, by the timeless monstrosities that reside on the outskirts of creation. If you should ever feel as if you are being watched while traveling through this piece of oblivion, the best chance you have is to immediately freeze in place and hold your breath. Continue to do so until your audience either loses interest, or moves in to claim you. If the latter should occur, feel free to scream as hard as you want, though your screams will fall on death's ears. At the end of the path lies a door that leads to a small, dirt-caked room. Propped up against the room's far wall is a heavily incapacitated corpse. What's left of its skin is long since blackened, blackened with neurosis. Approach it and ask one question. How did they acquire guardians? In response to your cure, cure quarry, the corpse will begin to steer. A subtle red glow will emanate from its eye sockets as it lifts its head and begins to whisper the long and macabre history of the olders. It will speak of unholy pacts and unspeakable atrocities. Within time, its tail will touch upon every form of evil known to man or God, and a few forms that neither can comprehend. Furthermore, if told the title of any holder, the corpse revealed that holder's history and the meaning of the object that it protects. While almost any holder, the holder of the path will never go into detail about itself. This is because the ghoul hopes that you will not question why it seems to be lacking an object. Truth be told, the ominous glow from within the ghoul's eye sockets is actually the shining light of the object that was somehow sealed inside of its skull. That is Object 7 of 538. Its holder will do anything to keep you away from it. In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to when you reach the front desk. Has to get asked to visit someone who calls himself the holder of wealth. The worker will raise one eyebrow as if puzzled by your request. Ask a second time and the worker will shrug and take you across the street. When an opulent mansion awaits, if you are observant by nature, you may notice that the mansion was not there when you started your quest. Its owner would rather you didn't think about such things. Inside the front door will lie a grand staircase, spiraling up across the foyer. The walls will be covered with fine paintings, and a large mobile statue will rest on a pedestal by the base of the stairs. The statue's ellerich features will evoke an image of truly horrific beast, at once both alien and evil. Admire it all you want, but don't touch it unless you wish to awaken this starved monster. <laughs> Ascend the staircase. As long as you don't touch anything, you will be safe. Don't panic. At the top of the stairs, you will find a small wooden door. Its plain and unassuming appearance is a sharp contrast to its decadent surroundings. It will open on its own for you, so long as you are not afraid. Past it, you will see a man with a pointed goatee and a short, cropped, geld hair, standing behind a large mahogany desk. A 
the suit is made of both human flesh and Italian silk. He may speak, and at great length. He will talk about his amazingly beautiful horse and a lovely statue, his concubine resting downstairs. Do not interrupt him, and do not answer any questions he may ask. When he is finished, steal yourself and confidently ask, May I have my salary? You proceed to explain you in great detail the value of life. It will talk of things worse than death and will tell you exactly what he expects you to do. The fabulous interior of the room will rot away and the floor will turn from French weaves to feces. The man's appearance will become cyclopic and unimaginably horrendous. He will fish out a small banknote from the pockets of his human suit and hand it to you. This note is object 8 of 538. Its holder is counting on you to spend it. In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask to visit someone who calls himself the Holder of Wisdom. The desk clerk will chuckle and guide you to an empty room. They'll hand you a key and tell you to wait some time in the room until you hear a bell ring. When it rings, you have to lock the door through which you entered. Wait until a second ring and unlock it. Once those instructions have been carried out, the door will open all by itself and reveal a long hallway with every conceivable color painted on the walls, ceiling and floor. Follow the hallways until you hear a little girl singing. Stop. Close your eyes and stay where you are until the girl finishes the song. If you fail to remain perfectly still, run. Run back to the door through which you came as fast as you can. Jump to the window of the room where you waited earlier, and you might live. Should you be, up, should you be unable to reach the window in time, You'll be dragged back in the hallway by something that is definitely not a little girl. You'll be pulled by this horn until time itself ends, forever feeling the pain of every soul dragged to an early grave. If on the other hand, you manage to remain perfectly still until the song ceases, you'll be free to either turn around and leave forever, or venture further into this realm. If you prefer the latter course of action, walk deeper into the hallway until you reach a human shaped door. Open it with the same key that was given to you earlier. Step inside and close the door behind you. In the middle of the room you will see a desk with a bright candle. Behind the desk is a man whose face is invisible behind the shine of the candle. Approach, but always keep the flame between you and the man's face, for if you witness what he looks like, your gaze will be fixed on his until your own hands have removed every inch of skin from your bones. Stop when you are five steps away from the desk. The man will raise his hand and gesture you to come closer, but do not step any further than this. Close your eyes and ask him one question. Who will bring them back together? You will hear the man rise from his chair and begin to pray in a language that you will not understand. After two minutes you will hear a name. If you're Anubis, then you had best utter your own prayers in a short time you'll have to do so. But if it is Thor you hear, then you may open your eyes. You will see the man's severed head lie on his desk, still speaking. After another three minutes his prayer will cease and he will tell you how you will die. He will describe every minute, every detail of your horrible death, and you will be unable to move or react while he explains your end. Lastly. You'll describe the one who will steal your life away from you and go into such detail as to why it is necessary that you yourself will question which will be, be worse. You being murdered or you being allowed to continue to live. Eventually the head will finish its ghastly tale. It is object 9 of 538. It is up to you what you will do with this knowledge of your death. For now, it is inevitable. Well, that was the next holder episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. We've got um a couple more to go. I'm surprised we're third way into this series. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Uh, again, I like doing these because they're gonna be a bit more quiet. 
with my voice. I don't have to be as loud. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys next time. Have yourselves a fabulous day. And as Nick, Tar Nick Nocturne would say, if you're watching this at night time, sleep tight. Oh, my phone. That's not good. That ruined my outro. Fuck. Doesn't matter. Goodbye. See you next time.